Hey, this is uh, an RPG that I've been working on for past three three weeks or so. It's partly the reason that I haven't been working on the Monster series as much as I did in the beginning. It's not the main reason. It, it does have a little to do with it, though, because uh, my free time has been spent on this a lot lately. Um... You may have heard me mention different ways to do collision detection in games. Uh, one of them being with tiles, and this game uses tile collision. Uh, one of the main benefits of this over the other method that I showed you guys is uh, no matter how many rooms you've got or how large they are, uh, you only ever have to code it once, and it's it's really easy to do. Uh, as long as you're using your tile sets in the same way, um, you'll only ever have to code it once. The original method I showed you uh, is a lot easier to understand visually because you're you're actually placing the boxes around things, but um, it is very tedious and time-consuming, and it's also not perfect all the time you know pl uh, sometimes you can you can get stuck on it and stuff so what I'm going to do is the next video is going to be based on tile collision and all I do is I've got one object in every room uh, it's it's uh, OBJ collision it's not a permanent object it, it just gets created when the room is uh, is entered and all it does is check each tile and gives it uh, gives an array a value of either 0 or 1. If it's 0 you can move through it, if it's 1 then you can't. And the player and the NPCs all use the same uh, collision and, and it works perfectly. It's really good. Um, just in case you're interested, uh, I've also done some other systems in this game. Um, we have a shop system, so um, if I just quickly sell these items, so with this system, um, if you if, if an item in a shop is better than what you've already got equipped, then it will show you show you some help show you some helpful text. Uh, so, for example, we can see the bandana gives you more defense. A uh, leather chest gives you better armor. Uh, wooden sword will give you more more attack. Um, any items that are equipped in here that were worse will just go into the inventory. Or if something's the same, the same value, it just goes into there. Um, just a basic system, really. And then there's an inn. Where you sleep and rest, get your health back. The actual um, the text in this game is one of the things that I've spent the most time on. Originally, it was um, just white text, uh, but it had a typewriter effect and a little beep after every character or so but I really want you to have colour text in it um, and it sounds something really simple to add but in order to get the effects that I want and maybe have um, other cool effects like wavy or, or shaking text um, you have to draw each character uh, one by one so you can't really you can't use any of the draw uh, functions like uh, draw text ext and uh, drawing to a, to a string won't give you the effect you want either. It has to be character by character. Uh, I'm about 80% 80, 80 of the way to where I, where I want it. Um, enough on text for now. So this this is the world map. And this, is, uh, this, this ugly uh, square is spawn collision. Every time you enter... Or exit a room and you, you go into a new room uh, you're gonna collide with a spawn object 
obviously it's not going to be visible to the player this is just for testing purposes and it just lets the game know what kind of monsters to spawn so I just have one variable inside uh, the object uh, local spawn and it's just set to a number and then uh, each of those numbers is uh, a different part of an array and in that array are the monsters and the chance they can spawn uh, I thought I would have to let each tile know what kind of spawn would be there which is actually how the um, the original Dragon Quest games did it because this game is, is kind of heavily inspired by Dragon Quest but I, I, <laughs> I couldn't think of a an easy way to do that without without it becoming really really tedious so uh, I just decided to have uh, collisions on spawns and then um, on parts of the world map there's like lines like, like a, a rectangular line where you have, you have to walk past and that's gonna gonna set the um, set the spawn uh, we're probably, probably gonna have a battle before we see one of those so this is the battle system uh, kind of basic attack defense magic item uh, I think only attack and defend and run work at the moment and I, I had to have a screen shake because that's what's in the Dragon Quest games. Um, the leveling system I've got right now uh, is very basic. It's not what's going to be in the end game uh, because I kind of thought if, if I just have the same leveling system as Dragon Quest, then, then why would people play my game when they can just go go back and play the you know the good old games? Uh, but I really want to want to add a system from a game called Mercenaries of Estonia, which is a, a really old uh, multiplayer uh, MMORPG. And in that game, you just have uh, like a list of stats and skills and spells. And every time you earn experience, um, if you, you have enough experience, you can you can upgrade whatever stat, skill, or spell you want to. And uh, you can build some really cool, different, and powerful characters that way. So, uh, in this game, if you in, in my game, if you want to play uh, a warrior with a, a load of hit points uh, and strength, so you do do the most damage, damage, then you can do that. If you want to play a mage with high physical defense and uh, strong magic power with you know like really powerful spells, then you can do that too. Or if you want to have like a, a mix and match, you know the the, the sky's the limit really, um, and a. Characters shouldn't really ever get to a point where they suck, you know, and, and they have pe people have to restart because you can always earn more experience and any stats or skills you haven't raised will be really easy to increase because they will re won't require that much experience to, to raise from the start. So you should never really, really be in a position where you have a, a crap character, basically. Um, let's see. Are the monsters... The monster sprites, by the, by the way, uh, they are not drawn by me. Uh, these are from Open Game Art, as well as the music. So here's an example of uh, two spawns. Uh, so when the player passes through them, let's see. It will also tell a player how dangerous this area is based on their overall level. I'm still going to keep levels in because it's a good way to let people know, uh, you know, whether they're going to get their their rear end beaten or not. And you may have seen over here a little exclamation mark because one thing I noticed in playing those old NES games is, what well, if you are looking for a battle and you, and you want to level up. You know, sometimes walking around can be a bit annoying. So if there's places on the map you know you can go to and, and get a guaranteed fight, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot better. Um, I'm also planning to have uh, multiple enemies at once. And then the player is eventually going to be in a position where he can have peop uh, like uh, soldiers on his team as well. Uh, that, this demo is is leading up to the point where the player will start to run his own kingdom and it's kind of like you can have a your own player home but it's a castle but uh 
you know it's not just a house it, it it's a it's a castle where you um you have to rule over people as well um it's a very basic outline of a story that i've got right now but yeah that, that's as far as we've got um and this 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 game is coming on quite well So I will leave it there and the next video you'll see will be on collision detection with tiles. Bye for now.